YouTube, what is good? It's your man Ribs from Doing Film Things. Every single week I drop a new video about film photography. So if that's your thing, definitely go ahead and subscribe. All right, so this week we're gonna be talking about Grain to Pixel. Grain to Pixel is a free software that you can download from the internet to use with Photoshop in order to convert your negatives. When I say software, you know, that might be a bit of a misnomer. I'm not actually sure what you would call this, but it's definitely some sort of a, a script per se. It basically executes some things within Photoshop and boom, out comes a little window that you can then use to convert negatives. Grain to Pixel is definitely only useful for Photoshop, so it doesn't really plug into Lightroom or anything else. If you have Photoshop, you can use this. If you don't have Photoshop, then you can. Installing this script is a bit interesting. Um, it wasn't very simple, let's just say. I definitely recommend you go online to the Grain to Pixel website and watch some of the installation videos. Basically, um, you kind of have to do this little hacky thing, especially if you have a Mac, in order to execute these scripts and then eventually get them to work in Photoshop. Um, it's not too time consuming, but I definitely found myself kind of scrolling through the video step by step and following along very, very exactly. All in all, it takes about five, 10 minutes. So make sure you do that before you jump into trying to do anything or else you're kind of be lost. All right, so I've got some fresh scans here from earlier today. And I basically use my Canon EOS R and of course my Essential Film Holder. I'm really digging this combo because the Essential Film Holder makes things very, very easy. Um, if you're interested in it, I've got a link down below so you can click and check out and perhaps even make a purchase. Okay, let's jump into Grain to Pixel and do a quick demo. All right, so Grain to Pixel basically works all within Photoshop. You can do everything in here, including the actual conversion itself. And then of course edits after the fact. So to do this, you basically wanna just create a random document. So I'm gonna take this one right here open that template it doesn't really matter right now and then once you have a black document then you can actually go into file you'll go up to scripts and then go to browse and I don't know if this is the best way to do this every single time but this is how I figured it out so far and this is kind of part of the issue with this app is that it doesn't really make too much intuitive sense so I'm going to the original download export opening that up and then I'm gonna run this, uh, I don't know what this is, a script, I guess, but we're gonna run that. And okay, so you see here, this is basically all of the control you get. And this is just to control your source file, where you're gonna output to, and then some light things up top here. So um, if you are using raw files, then you have to select up here, digital raw DNG files. So I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna pick a file again, and let me actually make this bigger, because. I wanna pick a specific file. Actually, I'm gonna pick a couple. We're gonna pick this one right here. Actually, no, we'll take this one right here, this one right here, and this one right here. They're three kind of very different images, so let's see what happens. So I'll click open, and then for my output, I actually already have a folder that I created earlier when I was messing around. So let's, uh, let's pick that one, list here green to pixel perfect and i've got some old ones here just disregard those that's me messing around and testing okay so right now this is what we have file saving we'll do save as tiff and you know these things i don't know i'm going to leave them kind of as is so we selected our files selected our output and then let's go ahead and click run and see what happens so it looks like it's doing something it says processing file one number two and now number three and as you can see, nothing happened. This is partially where I'm having issues because um, it doesn't work. However, if I then click here, linear TIFF files, and then click run, watch what happens. So it's actually doing stuff and it shows me the image here. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong there. Maybe I didn't follow a step correctly, but that's kind of the main issue with this setup overall is that it's not intuitive. You kind of have to mess around. And I watched the video to get me this far through the installation process and up to actually converting. And you know, obviously I can do something in the end, but it just doesn't make that much sense. And I don't know, maybe I'm not trying hard enough, but I think part of the good things about these softwares is that you want them to be extremely intuitive. You shouldn't have to mess around too much. You know, we all come from, or most of us come from something like Lightroom that's extremely intuitive. So. Anything that you work with that has to do with photography, I feel like has to match that level. And granted, this is a free software and it's kind of a startup, so I totally get it. But I hope that they're working towards making things a little bit more streamlined and less confusing. So let's go back to the conversion. So the main thing you need to do here at this first step is crop. So I don't know if you're supposed to crop to just what you wanna see, or if you need to crop in some sort of strategic way to only reveal image and not border, but Let's go ahead and just do image here and not include any border. So there's that. 
and then there's this right here and I think we're good to go we'll click return and that's gonna start doing other things it's, it's pretty interesting you can see kind of how it's thinking there but actually since I'm doing three images at once I'm just gonna click yes for the sake of it but this is basically asking if you want to match the white balance and the exposure and that kind of stuff across all of your images my images are all very different um, because I use this role over the course of a couple weeks so images are from all over the place but you know what nonetheless let's run with yes and see what happens so it should continue here and keep messing with the other photos and apply the same crop and as you can see you can kind of see how it's thinking which is which I find pretty interesting I don't know some people might not care but it's kind of working through different color options and that kind of thing um, so it looks like one of these images is done and that's that file up here now it's doing the second image, which is definitely not cropped the same as you can see right here. Um, but again, that's my fault. Hopefully, you know, that doesn't affect the scan too much. It probably is, but for now, let's keep it moving. So that's the second image, which is an interior shot here. And then finally, this is the third image. And also here, I got some of the black from the border. I'm assuming that's probably making a difference. This is similar to other software, like having a border is not ideal in your scan because it becomes part of the information that your program uses. So I think we're done here. Um, although, you know, there's no grand spanking message or anything. So it looks like if I click run, it would probably try to do it all over again. So let's not do that. Let's actually click close window. So now you have your scans here and let's start with the first one. Um, I'm just going to rotate this so that you can see it a bit better. So there's the image. And honestly, I think this looks pretty good. Um, you know, I'm not comparing it to anything, so who knows, but right off the bat, I don't see anything horribly wrong with it. Um, if I was going to edit this, I'd probably try to mess around with the shadows in here a bit. And I really love the blue though. This looks great and the sky looks amazing here too. I really like this exposure. I think it's nice. Um, considering it was a very sunny day. Um, this next photo, this is an interior one. So, you know, very different white balance and that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, obviously there's this green cast across the image. And this is Fuji C200, which oftentimes does have a cast um, or kind of has its own flavor of color. Let's not say a cast. Um, but anyways, I would definitely clean that up a bit and probably brighten up a lot of the shadows here since it's very, very dark here. And again, I bet you that's happening because of the included border here. That probably is throwing off the scan a bit. And then this last one here is taking us back outside again. And... Yeah, um, there's some interesting kind of stuff going on here color-wise. I'm not sure what what this is. This was an overcast day, so it explains kind of the dreary look overall. But uh, perhaps there were some brightly lit clouds here or something. I don't really remember. But either way, I don't find this scan to be offensive, although it is super cold. So again, we've got some border in here, which potentially is hurting this a bit um, and making some of the shadows appear even darker because this becomes the dark point in the image as opposed to perhaps some of the shadows. Um, but yeah, I think overall, I do like how quick this is and kind of how little you have to do to, you know, adjust anything here. Some people love to tinker. I do appreciate tinkering, but at the same time, I like to have a nice product to start with. And here there was nothing horribly offensive that showed up, which I really appreciate. I've had some results in other software where even though I like the software overall, randomly I'll get just some duds that make no sense at all. Um, assuming your photos are properly exposed, then, you know, it probably is okay. But in all these images, nothing horribly wrong. And of course, we're in Photoshop already, so I can go ahead and edit some of these photos if I need to. I'm not going to edit these now just because, you know, that's kind of not the point of this. But um, as you saw here, not too many steps to get to the final conversion. Although the stuff that I had to click on and kind of the random buttons, they don't really make sense and they're not intuitive and they're not obvious. And, you know, I can I can forgive that for now given that this is brand new but nonetheless this works so if you need free software to convert your negatives after scanning them in any way definitely recommend you check this out because when it comes to free this is probably the best I've seen um, I haven't really messed with too many free options but this works I mean you see it right here it converted the negative and it did it at least acceptably so I think that's something worthwhile before I give you my thoughts I'm definitely curious what you have to say now that you've seen it have you used this before what do you think about the process? You think this will make it into your workflow? Let me know in the comments below. So I've got two main things to kind of call out. First and foremost has to do with usability. Uh, green to pixel is very interesting. And honestly, it doesn't make too much sense in terms of how to navigate. The commands are very simple and the menu is very simple, which you think would be making it easy to use. But 
I kind of got lost and I felt like what I was trying to achieve wasn't really working as you saw in my example there. Maybe that's me or maybe that's the software, I'm not totally sure, but it's just not intuitive and it just doesn't flow, especially for someone who has a bit of experience with this kind of software. Additionally, this isn't really a product per se, so you don't wanna compare this to something like Negative Lab Pro or Film Lab Desktop where you have kind of a full dedicated UI where you can do a lot of different things. This is definitely not like that and I think that's by choice. Clearly they're trying to offer something simple and free here that's not too complicated as opposed to building out a full-blown kind of program with a UI and all of that. So don't compare it to that. Definitely think about this on its own. With that said though, I really like how the software performs. I found that of all the tests that I did, every single test gave me a very usable foundational image. And typically, you know, that's what you want, especially because most of us probably do edit our scans after the initial conversion. So I think this actually did a very, very good job on that. And none of the scans looked horrendous in any way. In fact, I thought all of them were pretty adequate. And they give you kind of a nice base product that you can then edit within Photoshop since you're already in there, or you can export them and throw them in Lightroom and then continue editing there. Either way, it definitely does what it says it's gonna do, and I appreciate that. All in all, I definitely recommend you check this out if you haven't made a decision yet in terms of what software to use. If you're kind of still shopping around or you've kind of let your free trials expire and you haven't made a purchase of Negative Lab Pro or Film Lab Desktop or anything else, definitely give this a try. I think this could work for some of you out there, especially if you're really trying to avoid spending any more money. This definitely works and I think it's worth a try. All right, y'all, that's what I got for this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and leave me a like. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. That's what I got. Peace.